everybody. Chris Colotti from the vCloud Hybrid Service Group. I'm a principal technical marketing architect in the group. And I wanted to take you through a quick uh, demo of the new VM uh, virtual machine monitoring service that was rolled out recently to just about everybody. Uh, it uh, has been rolling out uh, gradually through the different tenants in the vCloud Hybrid Service environment. So what I want to do real quick is actually go show you what you're going to see in this new feature. So if I actually click on virtual machines to bring up all the virtual machines that I own, I'm just going to sort this by owner. And I want to look at this MySQL box specifically, which is one that I'm actually running uh, some real-time data on. So a lot of folks noticed uh, about a couple months ago or some weeks ago that we saw this new monitoring tab. and. Uh, when you clicked on it, it actually said that there was nothing available. But now you'll see that there's actually some new charts here on the settings. And more importantly, when we click into the monitoring tab itself, we've now got four pieces of metric data for uh, CPU, memory, uh, disk reads, and disk writes. So you get this information now for the past 24 hours, the past seven days, and the past 14 days. And what I wanted to point out is where this information is actually coming from. So this is the statistical data that's coming from the uh, vCloud uh, suite, specifically vSphere, vCenter, under the covers. So this is what you would normally get if you had access to uh, the vCenter server, which we don't provide access to in the vCloud hybrid service. But we are now pushing that information through. So for example, on this SQL box, I can see that my CPU usage was pretty low. Uh, it had some uh, spikes around 90, uh, 90 megahertz because that the, the the top chart is actually the speed in megahertz. You can actually see that percent utilization is very very low on this machine, even though it's actually running some real time data. Same thing goes for uh, the memory usage. We can see the memory usage is pretty flat on this particular machine, it, uh, even as a SQL box running some web servers uh, data. It's not too high. And more importantly, we can get down into the disk reads and writes. And what I can see is that my disk writes are actually a little more uh, in use than my disk reads. So I actually know that this particular SQL server is more of a write intensive application than a read intensive application. And we can get this data across all three of these, as I mentioned, and we can actually refresh this uh, to see the updated information, especially if we're looking at the past 24 hours, we'll get this data uh, cranking through. So we could see that this is pretty active virtual machines, but what you can, really do from this is decide you know, how you want to dial in your virtual machine because now you've got some real data. So for example, this particular virtual machine was configured with uh, two gigs of memory and two virtual CPUs. Well, we really see now that this is barely using the speed of a single virtual CPU. The, the cores being passed through in the particular tenant that I'm in are 2.2 gigahertz. And this virtual machine is really hasn't used much. I mean, it's spiked up to 100 megahertz, which is well under the 2.2 gigahertz. So there's really no ne necessarily no reason why this machine has to have two virtual CPUs. So I could actually shut this down and dial it back. Same thing goes with the memory. I've got this configured with two gigs of memory, but uh, we could see it's barely using uh, you know, 0.2 gigs of memory uh, for its application. And lastly, you know, from a disk reads and writes perspective, if I was to monitor anything, I'd want to look at my disk writes to see if there's anything that might pop out at me. So I know I can actually resize this virtual machine. If I actually go back to the virtual machine list and I, and I look at, say, the web server that's actually communicating with this database server, it's configured the same way. It's a two by two. These are both using the SSD accelerated storage. And we're going to see a you know, slightly different picture across the CPU map and the memory map. So this is actually uh, an Apache server. And we see here that the memory uh, in use is a little bit higher. This is actually using uh, you know, so two gigabytes of memory in some cases. Uh, it's spiked up a little bit, but it's also uh, using a higher percentage of memory and the CPU utilization is not as high, uh, it's actually a little bit higher, sorry, than the, uh, than the SQL server. So we see that the web server is actually a little bit busy compared to the SQL server, but this is also the outward facing machine as well. Um, we can also see all of our disk information. So use this data to determine you know, how your application is running in vCHS and vCloud hybrid service, but at the same time, if you're actually migrating uh, machines, since this is the same data from Virtual Center, uh, you can actually take a snapshot of that data from your local vCenter server bring it over to vCloud Hybrid Service and compare that data uh, when it's running in VCHS. So 
That way you kind of get a real-time picture as to how it was running before the migration and how it's running after the migration. Ideally, we should see similar activity. We might see something different on the storage, obviously, depending on what, you got, what you're running on premises. But um, this is a great way to really leverage this monitoring feature and get some real-time data from the environment. So uh, hopefully everybody's seen it. If you haven't uh, seen it pop up, I'd encourage you to go check out the monitoring tab within vCloud Hybrid Service on the virtual machines that you're running today in the environment. So we'll be back uh, with another demo uh, as new features roll out.